I was talking the other day to a group of older singles, and the question I posed to them was, what was your ambition, mission, goal, dream in life? And they all, all had no nice ambitions. Nobody said that the goal was to get married. I just assumed that was the unstated goal of everybody. But one of them put it on the table and she says, I want to be a billionaire. By the way, millionaire doesn't mean anything nowadays. So she wants to be a billionaire. So I'm like, and you really want that? She says, I, I'm dying to do that. That's what I want to achieve. I want to get my billion dollars. I said, okay, great. You want to know how to get it? In Hebrew, they say, Ilu yedativ hayitiv. I can't tell you how to get a billion dollars because then I would have done it myself. But there's actually one um, system, time-tested system, how to get your billion dollars. And the first thing you need to do is to really want it. I mean, really, really want it. And what you really need to decide on is if that really is what you want. Because if you do, you can get it. Here's the thing though, if you get a billion dollars, will it get you what you want from the billion dollars? Which is, you surely want something with it, power, which comes with happiness at the end of the day. And that's what you truly want. So what's going to happen if you get it and you actually get where you want to get to, will you be happy with what you just got? And so let's take a look at this notion of achieving your billion dollars and what does it take to get there? And what's the issue with it? So <clears throat> there's, there's one problem with wanting a billion dollars. The problem is that there's something on the outside that you want that is essentially controlling you. So you have now submitted yourself to the control of an external force out there called a billion dollars with everything that it entails to make that money. And because you have something else on the outside controlling you on the inside, you are now essentially enslaved to something external. And happiness <coughs> will never come from that. So even if you get the billion dollars, the happiness you won't get. And so there is this, there's this prophecy of the prophet Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah. He's the prophet of this period of time. Three weeks. It's all about right the time of Hurban, the time of the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, and we're commemorating that, and we're looking at the destruction that takes place inside of us, because what's really going on is that the Beis Hamikdash was the epicenter of the nerve system of the world and the Jewish people, and since we lost the Beis Hamikdash, what do we have? We're disconnected. And so Yirmiyahu Anavi was admonishing them to do teshuva in order that the base of Mikta should not be destroyed. And in today's terms, Yirmiyahu is telling us what the Gemara says, that Kol Mishalei Nibne Beis HaMikdash B'yomov, Kilu Nechra B'yomov. The Beis HaMikdash, if it wasn't built in your, if it was destroyed in your days, if, if the Beis HaMikdash was not built in your days, it's as if it was destroyed in your days. So what would you do if you were standing in front of the Beis HaMikdash, even if you had a heart of stone? What would you do if you see the base of Mikdash in front of you being destroyed, you'd somehow, whatever it means, turn over the world. So what you want to do now is say, now, how am I going to turn over the world? And turning over the world essentially means finding Hashem in this world. So we have to manually construct this connection and attachment to Hashem because we lost Hashem in this world. We lost that home that housed Him in this world. So we have to go on a quest to find him. And Yirmiyahu is not admonishing as much as he's building us, guiding us, <laughs> showing us a path. Find Hashem and you'll find the base of Mikdash will be rebuilt. The opening Haftarah of the three weeks, because there's three, there's three Shabbos in the three weeks, each one of them we read a Haftarah of Korban. So in the opening of Haftarah, it's Tivri Yirmiyo bin Chilkiyo. It's the opening of Yirmiyo where Hashem says, go out and admonish the people. And he's like, I don't want this job. And Hashem pushes him into the job. The end of chapter one, leading into chapter two of Yirmiyo, which is the Haftarah of 
of the opening of there of of, uh, of the three weeks. He says, So said Hashem, I remember for you the chesed, the kindness of your youth. Avat what it was like when we got married. That's famous, right? Because of the song, you followed me in a land that wasn't so. And then he segues and he says, Remember those days when you followed me and you had Emuna and Mitachon and you just be just with together? That's who you truly are. And therefore he ends off the Aftarah. Kodesh Yisrael Hashem. Yisrael are holy to Hashem. Reshis Tevuosoi. The beginning, the first of his grain. Kol Echlov Yeshamu. Anyone who seeks to devour them will be consumed. Hashem. Evil will befall them, said Hashem. And that Pasuk in your Miyom is a super important Pasuk. Because Rashi, the great commentary, Rashi, Rashi was the commentator who turned over the entire Torah because he explained to us how to be a Jew. Rashi opens up, right? The first, first Rashi of the entire Chumash. And when you learn Rashi, what it means is, Rashi is like a teacher. Rashi is taking the Chumash and he's communicating to you. And Rashi is designed for the most basic Pshat. Many other commentaries have different levels. There's Pshat, Remez, Jewish, Soy, the secrets of Torah, there's hint, there's, there's there's ex- ex- expositions. Rashi is all into the basic, basic explanation. And Rashi says, let me open up the Chumash and unravel it to you. First Rashi of the Chumash opens up and he asks the question, he says, I don't get it. Why is it that you open up the Chumash with Bereshis, Baru, Elikim, and Hashem, and Why are you starting a story of in the beginning Hashem created heaven and earth? If Torah were a storybook, then the correct place to begin the story is in the beginning of creation. But Torah is not a storybook. It's an instruction book. Torah means Hora'ah, instruction. So Rashi says, the first place to begin the instructions, if I tell you, here's what you need to do in life. In the beginning, Hashem created heaven and earth. You ask, why are you starting there? Tell me how to operate. What's the, what's the operating manual? Right? You come into a business, they're not going to start with, how do you operate the business? That's the question. How do you operate the world? So the place to begin is Parshas Boy. The first mitzvah. The first time Hashem gives us a command, but that's the place to start. Why, asks Rashi, did you choose to start the Torah with the story? So Rashi says, I'll tell you why. Because something may happen. I'm giving you an instruction over here. It's so important for you to know this. I'm going to give you one and a half chumashim. The whole entire chumash bereshis. All the way through to the middle of Boi. So it's Shmois Vayar Boy, maybe even all further. But in Barsha's Boy is where the first mitzvah comes about, then comes later Matan Torah. And I'm going to give you this whole commission of it for one reason. So that you should be aware that God created the world. And you should be very clear that Hashem created the world. And after Hashem created the world, He was, there was the whole earth. And then Hashem saw this guy called Avram Avinu. And Avram Avinu Hashem chose him and he told him and his son Yitzchak and his son Yaakov that I'm going to give you the land of Israel. And he took the land of Israel and he gave it to you. And Rashi says, the instruction in your life is, She'im yomru umot ha'olam li'israel listimatem, if the nations of the world tell you you are bandits, you are thieves, She'kavashtem artzes shivagoyin, you conquered the land of the seven nations. How dare you steal the land from the natives of the land? What will you tell them? You'll give them an answer. And Rashi tells you, here's the answer. Last week, the Prime Minister gave the great Russia. You've got to hand it to him. He's good. He's an arata par excellence. He really knows how to communicate. And you got to hand it to him that he wasn't embarrassed. He unabashedly declared the rights of the Jews to Israel. And what he said was very powerful. Because, you know, the storyline in Israel, it goes that there's this flag, the blue and white flag, and people like to rally behind the blue and white flag. And um, it's like the emotional sign of Israel. And then you say, how old is Israel? Once a year, there's this day of independence. And it gets 
you know, the age of Israel is, what are we now, 75, 76 years old? Oh, 76 years from 1948. Let's get this straight. The flag and the Day of Independence are not anything to do with why we have the land of Israel. Because that says that in 1947, it was the United Nations partition plan. That's not why. He got up and declared that. And he said, guess what, guys? We've been in this land since the days of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Isaiah, and Jeremiah, is what he said. Therefore, our rights, our right to the land is thousands of years old, not 76 or 77 years old from 47, from the partition plan. Because if we accept that the United Nations gave us the right to be here, then guess what? That gives them the right to also decide that we should not be here. But if our right to the land goes all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, well, then we have much deeper rights to the land. And I thought that was very, very powerful. And the whole message, which was, America needs Israel. Yes, we also need you, but you need us. We're in the forefront. Great message, great power, beautiful. But then I was thinking to myself as I'm listening to him, so what if you've been there for 4,000 years? So, but if you stole the land at the beginning, so what's the difference how long you've been there? Ah, he fell short. And it, it amazes me how, like, listen, again, not taking from the pressure that he stands over there, from every side, from every angle. And surely it is, it was, you know, every, it's not just a speech over there, it's a speech which is, which is everyone's following and li listening to. And, and the fact that he was able to stand by there, you see the baby walking past the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and, and he tells him, he says that, no, not him, sorry, someone else walks past her on, on his behalf, and I just saw the video, and he tells him, you know, that make sure he stands chazak, he stands strong. And admittedly, he gave a lot of the Rebbe's views, which was beautiful to see, gratifying to see. But it was mind-boggling to see how he fell short of being able to say the clinching message. And why would you not say it? The Congress, they're all, they believe in God. In fact, he ended and he did say, God bless Israel and God bless America. I think he said that because they say God bless America all the time. So God bless Israel and God bless America is the way you end off a speech, any speech in America. But why can't you say one simple line? The reason we have the land is because God gave it to us. Because that's what Rashi says to say. The first opening Rashi of the Chumash tells you, every five-year-old needs to know this, the reason why we're starting the Chumash with Bereshis, with the story of creation is so that you should never be afraid of anyone or anything and you should be very clear. God gave us this land. It's not because Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were there for so many years, but rather because God gave it to them. And then you say, but it's not fair because the other nations have it. And you say, yes, it's not fair, Bubale. It isn't fair. But let's get this straight. It's because God said it. God gave it to us. And he's petrified to say that. I don't know, maybe because there's, uh, there's uh, you know, so much external pressure from forces inside Israel. That's called being Meshichi. That's being Messianic. If you say Hashem, it's being Messianic. As if there's any other way to stay in the, state, in the land of Israel other than being a believer. Because the Arabs are very much believers. They'll kill you with the name of God, Allah Hu Akbar. That's how they kill. And if you think you're going to fight back by saying, I'm here because I, I'm, I'm here. If you don't have a reason for being, you ain't going to survive it. And Rashi says to say it out. Rashi says, say because God gave it to us. Which verse does Rashi quote over there? The verse Rashi quotes, Kodesh Yisrael Hashem Reshit Fuato. Rashi says, Be Reshit. Hashem created the world for Reshit, the first. Who are the first? He says the first is the Jews. And Torah. Jews. How do I know Jews are called Reshit? He cites this verse in Yirmiyahu. Kodesh Yisrael la Hashem Reshit Tvuato. The Jew is the beginning of Hashem's creation, the beginning of Hashem's grain. Assume your position at the epicenter. This is hard work. Hashem tells you, you are at the epicenter. Why are you going on the sideline? 
you're the Hassan and Kala. Get into the wedding, get into the center, and take the stage, because you are the core of what the world is about. Now, that message has to penetrate inside of us on the cosmic stage, on the macrocosm, and in the microcosm of our lives. A means to take center stage. Don't allow things to happen to you. To happen for you, I should say. Rather make them happen to you. Don't allow things to happen to you. Allow them to happen for you. Make them happen for you. Realize Hashem put you in this place. It's not happening to you. You are created. It's created, I should say, for you to be able to access and do things around it. So why is the... Let's, let's dissect the prophecy of Yirmiyahu. What's the grain got to do with it? What does it mean? Reshit vuato. We are the beginning of the grain, the first of the grain. What grain? Grain is an analogy. We have a field. It's not a grain. Stuff grows in the field. And the Jews are the reshit, the first of the grain. So if we take that analogy, we'll understand a little more how to become the first. First means, how do I get to the point that I look at things and I stand my ground, I hold firm, and I, I realize it's for me, always. It's always good. It's always to make me better and it's to get me a deeper connection with Hashem. Nothing bad can ever happen in this world, ever. Here's the thing. That's a good theory. And Hashem says, you got to bring it into practice. You got to work it to make it real to you. Just like the earth has, the earth is fascinating, it's miraculous. Look at the earth, it looks dead. Ground. But if you throw some seeds into it, stuff comes out. Unbelievable. Every single little blade of grass or any vegetation that comes out of the earth, the sages tell us, Every single little blade of grass has an angel. Interesting how there's uh, radio, radio astronomy, I think it's called. And today they show you how, do you know that every blade of grass, scientifically, has a planet associated with it. There's a star out there for every single blade of grass on Earth, on Earth. On Earth. And every blade and every one that was affected in a different way, and that's why it grows the way it does. Take a look in science. But anyway, we're not learning science, we're learning Tara. And there's a muzzle. There's an angel for every little thing that happens. Just like you have little vegetation as an angel, so too. Think about it this way. Life is like this earth. And it produces stuff. Your day is made up of little things that go on all the time, right? There's like little mm, strands of life, little things that happen to you. And they come with strings attached, like big things and small things and little things. And in one day you could go through so many experiences and then just like these experiences being thrown at you. Every single little one of them has a muzzle, has a source, is, is controlled by Hashem. In simple terms it means it's all from Hashem. But Hashem makes it come to you in little, like, blades of grass. So just like you say, let the earth produce the grass, so too Hashem says that the earth, this cyberspace, so to speak, produce things. Those little things that happen, each one has an angel. What's an angel? An angel, a malach, is a messenger of Hashem. Every little thing that happens is a message from Hashem. Whatever comes your way is Hashem sending little depositing messages in your life all the time. There's two categories of angels, of malachim. We say in Davening, we say, Yotzer Meshartim, you create angels, present tense, Va'asher Meshartav, Kulam Amdim Burum Olam. And then there's the angel who stands from the beginning of time. So there's angels which we have names for them. Gavriel is the angel of severity of Kura. Michael is the angel of kindness. Those are set angels, Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, Michal, all those guys. Then there's angels that are created every single day. 
ואשר משרתה בזה אינג'ל קום פה בגינינג טיים, יוצר משרתים בזה אינג'ל לא קריאטד אברי סינגל מומנט, אברי סינגל בי. נאו, these guys are created all the time. And they come in your way, come in at you. When they come at you, it's like a computer game that we're playing. So these little things coming at your way, and what's your goal? To jump, 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 take each one of them and eat it up, right? And what does that mean? To notice Hashem in every little sliver of life that comes your way. To discover that the angel is really from Hashem. So how do we do that? We have these screens that we go through. Every screen is made up of six, um, these six uh, stages. And you have to go through those things, those six days. What are they called? Six days of the week. And then you have Shabbos. What's Shabbos? Shabbos is, beam me up, get reconnected. When Shabbos comes in, we allow the Shabbos in with a beautiful tefillah. And I think understanding this idea of the Balatanya really allows us to experience this tefillah on a whole new level. The tefillah of Shabbos is called L'chun Ranano, Kabbalat Shabbat. What are we saying in that tefillah? We are flipping mode from work week to Shabbos mode. What distinguishes the work week from Shabbos mode? We say this, this in the Psukim, when Hashem created the world, it says, Yem HaShishi, Vayichulu HaShamayim V'Yoretz V'chol Tzavon, Vayichal Elokim V'Yem HaShvi. What does that mean, Vayichal Elokim? We typically translate it as? The what? Hashem rested, Hashem finished the work. Vayichal Elokim, Elokim was finished. Hashem has two names. One is called Elokim, and the other one is called Yud Kei Vav Kei. During the week, Hashem operates with the name Elokim. Elokim is the gematria, the numerical value of Hateva, nature. Hashem comes down to Teva. Shabbos or Yechan Elokim. What's the mission of Shabbos? To realize your life is a miracle. It's not natural. During the week, you live with Hashem in a natural mode. Yechan Elokim is to recognize your life is not natural. It is miraculous. That's why everything about the Luchun Aranana prayer is all about using the name Yud Kei Vav Kei. Did you notice? L'chun ranana la Hashem. And the whole thing, every shiru la Hashem shir chadash. Right? To Hashem, 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 Hashem. Havu la Hashem b'nei elim, havu la Hashem kavod v'oz. That's Yud Kei Vav Kei. Yud Kei Vav Kei is a Yahweh v'yeh. Was, is, and will be. Or when. You ever notice what we say? Norahu ki gadol Hashem mikol elokim. Or norahu al kol elokim. Those kind of statements. We make them actually, I think, three times in L'chun ranana. What does it mean? Noirahu al kol elokim. He's awesome over all. What's elokim? You know what it means? He's greater than all. All the gods. What are we? Greek pagans? God forbid. We say it again and again and again, many times. And in that, the Chunarana, we said numerous times. Elokim here is not, God forbid, other gods. Elokim is Hashem, as He appears in nature. And what we are recognizing is that Yudke Vavke is Gadol Mikola Elokim. Elokim is all the permutations of how Hashem expresses Himself in this world. It's wild. The ride of life is a wild ride. And there's, whoa, things happen to you all the time. You need to get together and recalibrate to just get connected, beamed up once a week and say, I got it, Hashem, I get it. This is all, my life is a miracle. So once a week, you have to look. Shabbos comes in. It's really hard work to keep Shabbos. It's not easy. And once a week, you've got to come in and recognize Hashem in your life. Recognize Yud Kei Vav Kei. See how we do it? And you say, Ki Gadol Yud Kei Vav Kei Mekola Elokim. So what does that mean? You know, like a few weeks ago, I had, like, you know, bad news needs to come on Sunday, not on Friday. It's a halach in Shulchan Aruch, right? You should never, like, you can't go for elective surgery from Wednesday, Wednesday, from Tuesday night already, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because it's already Shabbos mode. You want to feel good on Shabbos. So if you want to um, fire someone from work, don't fire them on, on Friday. Because then, why do you want to destroy their Shabbos? Seriously, if you're dating a girl and you're having a shidduch, tell her no on Motzi Shabbos. Not on Friday. 
right? But anyway, I got this terrible news on Friday. And I was trying to dive it on Shabbos. I remember I got my, my head's just all over the place. And it was just so hard because my whole heart is feeling like all these stresses and anxieties just right there entering into my heart. And davening Kabbalah Shabbos was really hard, actually. And it was about, like, the work. What's the work? The work is to look at yourself and to monitor all the feelings that are going on and recognize just, okay, this is the feelings I'm having. And allowing Hashem into your life. That doesn't happen automatically. It's a tefillah, it's a prayer, which allows us to draw Hashem's energy inside of us. Because Hashem wants to hear, He wants to hear us. And he wants us to express ourselves. And that's the Lechon Aranana prayer. The Lechon Aranana is basically a Yid establishing that Hashem is great in my life and that my life is divine and miraculous and godly. <clears throat> and once I do that, the voice of a Jew can be heard. So we end off and we say, Mizmbol David, Havu la Hashem b'nei Eilim. What does that mean? Render to Hashem what's B'nai Eilim? Sons of? What's Eilim? What? Ayalim. It, it, what it literally means is sons of gods. Problem word, right? What it means is like this. In Parshish Bereshis, we talk about B'nai Elohim, sons of God. And there's also B'nai Eilim, without the hate. Both of them are angels which are divine powers in this world. B'nai Elohim are those angels that are created from the beginning of time. Those are the hard and fast godly forces of this world. B'nai Eilim is the little things that happen to you all the time. They are sons of God. Why are they sons of God? Because they are offshoots of divine energy coming my way. And what I want to do in order to daven is give them over, render, give them over to Hashem. Havu la Hashem, give over to Yudke Vavke, all these little forces in your life, the B'nai Eilim. Give it to God. Give this thing to God, give that thing to God. And so if something happened to you that's really hard, what you, it's, you can't survive life if you don't do this. You have to go connect to Hashem and really get it. The word Elohim is the same as the letters are Elem Yudke. Elohim, right? Aleph, Lamed, and Mem at the end. Take the hand and the Yud and make a Yudke out of it. What's Elem? Elem means mute. What Yudke is Hashem. God is mute. Yep. When things happen to you in the world, God is mute. You don't see Hashem. And what you want to do is take these B'nai Elim, Elem, and give it to Hashem. And say, I recognize that my life is godly. I see Hashem in every single space over here. I notice God in my life. Hashem wants to hear your voice. He's like, I'm there behind everything. But in order for Shabbos to be kept, I need you guys to keep Shabbos. I need you to recognize the Shabbos. So let's, let's dive in a little bit and see how we do it. Every morning, when you wake up in the morning, in order to have a proper morning, you need to keep Shabbos first. Just like we have Shabbos once a week, we actually have Shabbos once a day. Little miniature Shabbos. What's it called? Davening. Davening is a critical, it's critical for your emotional and mental health. You must do it. If you don't daven, what happens? The world controls you. The halacha is, asur lechol kodem matfila. Can't eat for davening. You know, you go to a hotel for Shabbos and they give you a thing, and they say there's a continental breakfast. You're not allowed to make no breakfast, let alone continental, before davening. The reason is very simple. Food. Food is physical. It will bring you down. It's you required to go down into the material and eat it and consume it. Ditto for work, if you work before davening. 
and ditto for checking the phone and the news before davening. If you do so, what you're doing is, imagine you wake up in this book in the morning. I have the, honestly, the, this is always the, the, uh, the challenge. <clears throat> it's a struggle. You wake up in the morning, you really want to know what just happened in the other part of the world. But if you do and you succumb to that, you know what happens? The B'nai Elim right away take over you. They enter and these forces from outside enter into you. And they control you. And you don't yet have control over yourself. So you have no power to go control them. Because the only way for you to get on top of your life and be able to control it and, and be able to bring Bitochen and Emunah to your life is by you taking charge of your life. And that happens through davening. So let's analyze the process of davening. You start davening and the way it works is, you know, the Pasuk says, Stay away from a person whose soul is in his nostrils. What is he reckoned as? Stay away from a person whose soul is in his nostrils means the person who hasn't davened yet. When you wake up in the morning, you wake up. What just happened? Notice what just happened. Hashem withdrew your soul. Going to sleep, by the way, it's a miraculous process. It's unbelievable. Going to sleep is one of, I think, the most greatest acts of bitachon you could ever do. Because if you've got a million things happening in your life, and it's like a busy time, hopefully with good things, and then there's so much stress, then you have to go to sleep, and you can't go to sleep, you can't fall asleep. Falling asleep means recognizing that I don't need to do anything actually. I need to go lie down now and do nothing for the next seven hours. And Hashem will take care of me. And you deposit your soul back to Hashem. It's, it's incredible. And then, Chadashim Lab Karim, as it says in Eicha, brand new in the morning, Rabbi Munasecha. When you wake up in the morning, that's a new life. Your soul gets deposited into you. Take the soul and expand it. So the Pasuk says, Chadlu adam, stay away from a person whose soul, when he wakes up your soul's in your nostrils. He didn't expand it yet. Ki bama nechshavu, bama is what? Bama is also mean. Bama means? A pedestal, a stool, a, a stage. He's considered as, he's a Balgaiva, or ego. When you wake up in the morning, your soul is there, it's ready. You just got a soul from Hashem. If you take that soul and you watch the news and you start eating and you engage in the physical and you go to work right away, you've squashed and destroyed any semblance of soul inside you. What you want to do is expand the soul. If you don't, you'll suffer the consequences. You'll have anxieties and things that happen to you all the time. You didn't get ready. You didn't do your meditation of the morning. What's the meditation? It starts with brachas. Much better than watching the news. It's to say brachas. What's brachas mean? And draw Hashem down. Baruch, bring down. Atah, you, Hashem. Hayahov every year. That's the Luchun Aranana. Luchun Aranana Hashem. To become Elokeinu. To become my God. I went like that. I stretched. I put on my clothing. I opened my eyes. And I have strength. I have koyach. What I want to do is each one of those pause, stop, and say, Baruch, Ata, Hashem, Elikeinu, Melech, Oilam, Malvish, Arumi, Baruch, Ata, Hashem, Elikeinu, Melech, Oilam, Zekiev, Kefufim. I'm recognizing Hashem in every little thing that I'm doing. And what you want to do is stop and pause and pay attention to what you say. Don't just say it. Recognize to be able to put on your clothing is a godly force. That's a little angel being created because there's power in you. Because God forbid when people don't have that koyach anymore. So it's not about just thanking God for your health. That's good too. It's about noticing. I was just given an neshama. I notice my neshama. Then I expand and I say the brachis. That's me expanding the soul to be able to be enveloping my entire being. To be me. To become real to me. Baruch Hashem Elekeinu. Ata, you, you're connected to me. You become my elekeinu. And for me to do that, I have to recognize God in my life. Now, when I go through the whole davening, that's the process of davening. It peaks 
when you say Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elekeinu, Hashem Echad. Are you worried about things going on out there? Why are you worried? Only Hashem is Elekeinu. It's all miraculous. It's all there for the Jewish people. Right? Think about it. The Prime Minister gets up to speak. Really what he should be saying is, he should be apologizing for existing. That's what Jews usually like doing. He should be saying, you know, so sorry, and whatever, that we were just, that we were destroyed, and we were killed, and learned, da, 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 da. but you know what? This is one of the messages the Rebbe gave to him, to Bibi, is that America, you know what they like? They like power. They want the guy who tells them no. Actually, they like it better than the guy who tells them yes. They want to see that you're, you're they want to see that, that excitement. They want to give you a standing ovation when you, Go with all the power and like they're excited to see that. That's, that's exceptional. And to do that, you have to have a strong emunah in Hashem. If you would do it all the way, and you would take your place on the stage of history and say, Kodesh Yisrael HaShem, a yid is holy to Hashem, racist for us. So he's a source of all this grain. All the little things that happen over there, I'm the racist of it all. There's a lot of little growths in this world, and I stand at the epicenter. If you really do that, the world follows. They'll give you a massive standing ovation more than you could ever have hoped for. So, the sages tell us, whoever says, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elekein, Hashem Echod, and he extends the Echod, he says, Echod, Ma'arichin lo Yom Avushnoisat has a long life. What that means is, if you're able to expand the Shema Yisrael, the sense of Einan Mulvadi, the noticing there's nothing besides Hashem, and bring it down, extend, not saying Echod, not that. Even question whether you're allowed, because you've got to say Echod, not Echod. What you want to do is expand the Echod. It means you started your day, you recognize God, you notice it in Brachas, you've worked your way through, you're learning, and you're, connected, you're noticing Hashem in everything. And then you get to Shema Yisrael, and you close your eyes, and you exit, this is Echod, and then you extend it into your day. That's the hard part. You went up, you connected to Hashem, you found Him, now you want to bring it down. Your goal is to bring Hashem to bring Hashem into your heart and into your soul. Because here's the way it works. <clears throat> In Ashrei we say, We all want Hashem to listen to us. We want Hashem to hear our cry. They cry, Yishma, he should hear the Yoshiyeng. How do you get Hashem to listen to you? How do you get Hashem to hear your voice? So Hashem says, there's one little mechanism. It's not just about you asking me for what, what you need. Hashem says, V'nikdashti betoch b'nei Yisrael. I want to become holy inside b'nei Yisrael. I want to be felt inside you. And this is the, it's, it's hard and it really gives you a struggle of life, but when you get it, it's exhilarating. Hashem wants us to do the work. He wants us to do all the work ourselves. He says, you're holy, and your goal is to recognize that. And if you don't recognize it, the world's going to eat you up. It'll consume you. The only way to get around this is by standing at the epicenter. So on a global stage, the world's going to make you feel like it's the end of Israel. And what are you going to do? You stand and say, I'm connected to Hashem. I don't need the world. I don't care. And you stand in your power and you watch all of them will fall apart. But if you don't stand in your power, then you're right. If you believe them, then you're right. Your job, job is to keep Shabbos and to go to Chunaran and Allah Hashem, to expand that into every day in davening and to work it and then to enter the world. And there's only one way to enter the world. And that is, Korev Hashem lechol kairav lechol asher yikra'uhu be'emes. Hashem is close to all those who call him. Call him with an emes. What's emes? Emes is Torah. How do you know what to do in life? You have to look in Torah. Here's how it works. You know, I hope my son will forgive me for saying this, but for the benefit. So, Baruch Hashem, you got engaged. And it was exciting. When you hear someone got engaged, it's exciting. Nice. Wow. When you go through it, through the process, oh, it's a process. And you realize it's nothing short of a miracle. And so we were sitting having a conversation. 
And th the basic conversation was, so I found a great girl, she's unreal, but why should I get married to her? Essentially, why would I want to give up on my life of, of um, freedom, of being single and happy and so good? And I don't have to pay for anything. <laughs> and, and you want me to go, okay, I mean, to have, I guess, a girlfriend's fun. <laughs> but now I have to start paying for everything myself. And so there goes my freedom. Along with having someone else that I got to look after and, and connect. And then kids and everything else comes with it. Oh, oh boy. And look at all marriages, what happens to them. And look how difficult it is, etc., etc., etc. When you start thinking about what that means... The anxiety comes right into you. And it was hard. I watched the real deal. And not just a theory, it was a lot of, a lot of, a lot of anxiety. Nervousness, scared. And then it's like, okay, much easier to say no, I'm out of here, and bye. I think many people do that. And you can't do that commitment, right? That's the biggest <coughs> issue for Shadchan, the lack of commitment. How do you get that commitment? What do you do? What it takes is, and I told them this, I said, <clears throat> write down, write down your wonderful qualities that you have. Write down the things that Hashem gave you. This is like making brachas. The brachas, notice Hashem in your life. Notice every little detail of what Hashem gives you. What anxiety is doing to you is making you see all the things you don't have. And it's overpowering. You want to do this right? Look at the things you do have. Build up. So, this is my quality, that's my quality. And look at the things you have and notice Hashem in everything. And write it down. It's hard work. And the HR is, yeah, but, but, you, but don't put yourself down. Start looking little things and expand the ability to see the th little things you have. Okay. Now you've built that up. Now, look at your life and ask yourself a question. What does Taylor say to do now? We have a beautiful lens to look through. How do I know what I should be doing? Why would I give up my freedom? The answer is, what does Torah say to do? Torah says to get married or not? Just to get married. At what age? Around where you are. It says to get married. And it says that Hashem wants a person to live with a mate. And Hashem wants you to have kids. That's what God wants. He wants a world and he wants you to be in it. And he wants you to go down into the physical. And yes, chasen means chus darga, go down a level. If you look in the Torah, you'll get clarity. And Hashem tells you that when you go out, you've got to go out with someone, right? And you've got to get to know them, see that you like them. Not see that you can be with them for the next 50 years. Because how could you possibly know what 50 years will bring? You don't know what tomorrow will bring. Hashem doesn't ask you to figure that one out. He's like, I'm God. I'll figure this one out. You do one thing. Figure out if you like that person. You like them? Jump. When you get clarity of Torah, which comes about through learning Torah, you know what to do. It's so sad to see people don't follow Torah. It's sad. It's like, what should we do now? Yes, get married, not get married. Maybe I should get a career or not. Right? And then you're like all over the place and you have no, you have no way of no guiding light in your life. Hashem says, Korav Hashem l'chol kerev, I'll be right with you l'chol asher yikra'uhu ve'emes. You've got to go follow Hashem with an emes. So here's how we work life. You wake up in the morning, attach yourself to Hashem. Feel the power of Hashem in your life. Expand it through the brachas. Allow davening to penetrate your system. You ready? Finish my Yisrael. Hashem l'chol Hashem l'chol. Okay, now you're ready to go out into the world. Jump into the world. How do you jump into the world? You learn Torah. And you learn what Hashem wants you to be doing through the day. Torah is physical. Torah talks about very physical things. But Torah is Hashem descending down into the physical world. Torah is the message of God as it's expressed in this world. God guiding you as to what to do in this world. If you're a prime minister, if you happen to get to that point, and you have to ask, what does Hashem want? So you're in a very important position. Hashem says, Rashi tells you what Hashem wants. He says, tell the nations. 
Tell the Congress. Tell them it, belong, it comes from Hashem. I think you have to work on yourself to feel that, not on them. Because if you believe it, they will too. They'll sense there's a Jew who is expressing Hashem outwardly. And when you do this, Hashem becomes close to you. Your job is to throw yourself into a recognition that God runs the world. It's all Hashem. There's no sense of you. You don't need to worry about a thing. And to keep on saying the Chonoran and daven that and work that. And look at the things that are currently going on. The little angels that are going on and sending you messages in your life. And by Chalalikim and bring right into Shabbos mode. And as you get into Shabbos mode, do that every single day. And then you walk out into the world. And when something happens to you, what do you do? When you have something comes your way, you'll look at it right away and you'll say, Hashem, in my life, an opposition, an opportunity to bring Hashem. That opposition is not opposition, it's opportunity. That's why we say, Korab Hashem, the whole Korab, the whole Hashem, the whole Hashem is close to all those who seek Him. And they look at Him through the eyes of Torah and they recognize what to do because I daven, I bring the daven into my Torah and I'm able to activate it in real life. And then the next Pasuk says, where it's saying, Yerei Aviyasa, Hashem does the will of those who follow Him. You know what that means? It's called, stop worrying about the things that you have to achieve. Just let go. You want to make a billion dollars? The way to make a billion dollars is by recognizing that it's okay if I don't. I'm perfectly fine not making a billion dollars. And I accept it, the disappointment, whatever disappointment is, just feel it. That, that means I'm letting Hashem in. No more Elikim. I don't need this. How do you not need it? Think about what if you get it and, and if you don't get it, what's, what's going to happen if you don't get it? You'll be 85 years old, you didn't get it, now what? And it's like, okay, accept it. Accept it now when you're 20. And you recognize it's okay. And then what do you do? Go do all the acts that you have to do to make a billion dollars. I don't need it. It's just direction for me to go in life. So now I'm not stuck in it. Because when it controls you, you'll never make it. And then watch how it will come your way. You'll be like, okay, whatever. You'll be fine. Because you're fine now. It's not an external force that's getting into you. So, Kodesh Yisrael Hashem means a Jew needs to take his place. Assume his place. And it means hard work. When things happen to you. To notice what's going on when it happens. Because your Miyawa Nabi recognizes that there's many forces in this world that want to eat up your Yisrael. Yisrael is a Jew connecting to Hashem. Recognizing he's the first of all this grain, all the things that are made by Hashem. But then he says, Kol ochlav yesham. Who's trying to eat him up? Life is trying to eat you up. What eats you up? When you walk into your life, there's things that want to eat you up. Those are the nations that control the land of Israel. Who are they? These little emotions inside you. Like the one to get angry and lose your temper. If you lose your temper, what does it say? Why are you an idol worse if you got angry? Because you detached from Hashem. But the same thing applies to the whole family of them. If you have an addiction, and you follow the addiction, it destroys the sense of, of, of normalcy of who you are. It kills you, it eats you up. That's what it means. Kodesh Yisrael Hashem, Reish Yisrael Jews only to Hashem, but Kol Ochlav, all those who consume Him. They destroy your sense of Yisrael. The world wants to destroy the sense of your Yisrael, the sense of who you are. And what do you do? Kol Ochlav Yisham. Hashem is carbon. You offer yourself to Hashem. How do you offer yourself to Hashem? You take whatever feeling comes your way. So you're feeling, you're feeling a strong, strong temper, angry. You take all the energy out of it. Just sit there and watch the anger inside you. This is very, very hard work. You have an addiction, you just sit there and you've got to be strong in it. you got to just sit there and feel this incredible energy of the feeling that's there and just wait with it for 20 minutes and then it goes away 
and then you have to make a decision to go on and to keep strong and you fall and you rise and you get back to your Israel constantly and ultimately what's a Jew's life a Jew's life is about me recognizing God finding Hashem. And so Yemiyot tells us, you want to build the base of Mikdash, you want to rebuild it, you want to get reconnected to the base of Mikdash. The way to get reconnected is by connecting to your Israelness and recognizing all those who seek to destroy you and to eat you up and to consume you and looking them in the face and telling them, I have Hashem and all those out there, the Hashem, because I'm connected. And then the base of Mikdash gets built by Hashem.